back through some country towns. Here we are, we're on the black top. You just saw us all back in Maruna. Um, we were regrouping there, all meeting up. And we've headed south down the southwestern highway. We've turned off to head up to Collie, so we're on the Coldfields Road right now. We're heading Collie bound. Um, and the plan is to head into the Wellington Dam area, probably on the east side, uh, spend the night on the dam. We're coming back into, or we have come back into campfire season now, which is awesome. So, we're gonna get some firewood, uh, get a nice big fire on the go, get some dinner going, and just chill out, just relax. The weather is absolutely primo today. Couldn't have asked for a better day. Funny thing is, we've got that cyclone just lurking up, up to our north. Um, little old Saroja, her name is, so, yeah, she, she's bringing the pain up there, but we're gonna get a bit of rain, that's about it. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, but for tonight, we should be right for tonight at least to have a fire, um, get some dinner on and have a nice night at camp. And we'll see how we go in the morning. We were just talking on the two-way, and we're, we're heading to Collie right now. Um, stay tuned for this, because we're gonna, we're gonna stop at a hardware store. This will all make sense soon, don't worry, but we're, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna stop at a hardware store, grab a few things. Hopefully they they're gonna have those few things that we want. <laughs> so stay tuned. And, and we'll see you soon as we're getting into the madness. Alright, good stuff. We'll talk in a minute. Haha, <laughs> yes. So we've come to Gnomesville. This is in the Ferguson Valley. Uh, and we're not far from Collie from here, about a half an hour drive out. And uh, yes, we've got ourselves some gnomes. I've made a little sign, and we're gonna make a little Australian off-road town. It's incredible how creative people get out here. There's entire sections that are entire little towns. We got the most professional sign. I think so. Second to none, mate. Like here's me putting a little sign together that we just knocked up out of some stuff we found in Kip's car, really. But there's people that have built little shelters and shacks Ooh, and corrugated iron and timber frame little houses. Very cool. So we're on the hunt now to find a little spot for ours. Where's my name? Photo on your turf. I officially declare we're Australian off-road land. Yeah, that's a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> I officially declare we're Australian off-road land. Hold on, can you go? Like, go. Oh, just jump. Fight him off the back somewhere. How much is it? Twenty dollars. Stop pushing hard enough, maybe we'll just break. <laughs> Wait, see it? Stay. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Whee! T tips over. <laughs> there you go, folks. Uh, I officially declare we're Australian town or we're Australian village or we're Australian off road shire, whatever you want to call it, is officially open here in Gnomesville in the Ferguson Valley. Come down, buy a gnome, write your name on it, put it there in the pile. We're just here next to the second bridge down on the track. Entry to the Shire is only one can of export. <laughs> Get amongst it, have some fun, have a laugh, and come down and check this out because it's really cool. It is really cool. It like hasn't been smashed to bits, you know. Don't come here and be a dickhead, just have a wander and check it out. So we've come from Gnomesville, as you just saw. Now we are. Heading towards Honeymoon Pool, which 
taking this one way lane so we're, we're on this we're on the west side of the dam so we're coming down through here now and I mean the scenery is just stunning through here this dam or the river sorry from the dam weaves its way down through this valley gully uh, and it's rocky outcrop Jarrah and Mary trees all through and it's just a it's an absolutely stunning little drive That damn wall painted by a fella by the name of Guido Van Helton, born in 1986, Australian fella, and uh, it was a one and a half million dollar project. Um, took a fairly long time, as you can imagine, and that artist is also uh, known for a particular mural on a solo. Uh, in Victoria there as well Let's throw that picture up on the screen as well so yeah quite a oh you can even still see it from here in the background quite a striking feature of this Wellington Dam absolutely stunning it's nice to see it if you're so inclined you can um, abseil off this wall here too this is a quarry I got a feeling a lot of the form work and all the stonework and whatnot was taken out from this quarry and uh, yeah for many years many many years ago it was used for abseiling uh, and if you got a permit and your own gear and I don't know qualified whatever it is that abseilers have to have you can come here and do some abseiling off this cliff for the day which is pretty cool not really my thing I'm a bit of a pussycat when it comes to to heights myself but I will the blacktop now and we're on a few gravel tracks heading into the Wellington Dam into this camp spot that Brownie's taken us to it's one of his favorites for well, what I've seen it looks pretty nice so that's the go for the night
So we found our little spot here. We're on the very east side, southeast side of the dam. Place to ourselves. It's beautiful. Nice and calm. I'll tell you what, the clouds are coming in though, so you can see behind me there, she's starting to come in. Be interesting to see what's um how much rain we're gonna get and what time it's gonna come in. That's alright. I think we're all prepared. Be a bit of a wet pack up, but that's okay. Have a go at it though. Isn't this stunning? It's beautiful. We did want to get into camp a little bit earlier than we have, <laughs> but that's alright. It's been a nice arvo. But now everyone's setting up. I'm going to get my awning out, get the swag out. I'm going to throw it under the awning tonight because I don't want to, if I can avoid it, I don't want to have to pack up a wet swag. So yeah, I better get into that while there's a bit of light left. I think we'll get a fire going too. We'll see you in a jiffy. The only time I felt, didn't So Kyle and Leah cooked dinner on a, well, you used camp oven, didn't you? What did you have? Some curry. Yeah, yeah, uh, Japanese curry. Cooked Japanese curry on the fire. And Brownie's pulled out, what's this plate called, Brownie? It's called a Bidji Barbie. A Bidji Barbie. I'll show you in a sec, but it's this round, like a cook plate thing with legs. It's like a massive flat frying pan with legs on it. Good, hey. It's even got a handle. This thing's tripped out, this so is the, cool. Uh, the legs foldable or? Yeah, it all folds up in one piece. It's cooking some chicken on it. This is sick. I've not seen anything like it. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Look at that madness. Massive handle. What did you have? Uh, it's called Biggie Barbie. It was like 80 bucks or something, eh? Hey? Cheap. That's crazy. Does it come with a cover for that price? No, nah, you got to buy a cover. It's like 10 bucks for a cover, but canvas bag, so it's not too bad. And then so the legs, the legs, the legs all fold, fold over back then, over onto itself. Yeah, and then the handle folds and over. And then the handle. Under there is like a T-bar, and huh. it's actually your handle to hold it. Well, there you go. You saw it here first, folks. <laughs> Bidgey Barbie. Yep. I think I'd put it back in the fire. Hang on, hang on. So he's just taking it off the fire. Have a look at this thing yeah, properly. Yeah, yeah. Look at that thing. <laughs> That's sick. <laughs> that is so sick. I want one. I think Matt approved. Oh, I love that. That's sick. Can you tell? I just said that's sick about five times. <laughs> oh, no. It's not. You want to be a lot colder on. It's always warm out here. It's dropped a bit. I'm hoping it feels cooler than it was before. I reckon that cloud's going to keep it warm or not. It's not moving quick either. No. Well, she's definitely come in. Good morning from a very wet and miserable camp this morning. 
about quarter to eight now. We've all slept in. Everyone else is still in bed. Started started drizzling probably around midnight. On and off. And then uh, picked up around four. And we've got this steady drizzle. It's not quite rain. It's a steady drizzle. It's dead calm. Dead quiet. It's quite nice. It's beautiful. Like crikey, it's nice to be back under the awning with some rain. I do enjoy this kind of weather. We uh, got some breakfast on, got some coffees going, and slowly we're just starting to pack up now. It's nice, but it has kind of killed the mood too. Still being nice to sit around under the awnings with a fire going, get some brekkie on, have a coffee. It's not been all bad. It's been quite nice. <laughs> yeah. This rain is coming in hard now. Uh, yeah, it's just getting worse from here on in, so really got to start thinking about getting packed up. Oh man, I'm going to get so wet. <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah, she's coming hard. <laughs> We're getting out of here. That was a bit of a uh, last minute scramble just to get all the awnings packed up and kind of every man for himself. <laughs> oh, this is just incredible this this cyclone up north. Who would have thought? Pushing all this rain down. Oh well, it's fun though. This is just how things work sometimes. There's no no hiding anything from the cameras here. This is just real, this is how it gets. someone who's making these videos and whatnot you've got this idea in your head of what what you want to get filmed what you what you want to sort of achieve for the video you have a you have a set idea I suppose of what what you want to get filmed and um, where you want to go how you want to do it how you want it to work but it doesn't always work like that quite often more often than not it simply doesn't work out the way you want it to. And this is a classic example, you know, I wanted, wanted there to be um, fire cooking this morning for breakfast and catch the mood of the of the camp, everyone around there the fire. Go. But, you know, it does, yeah, it just simply didn't work out that way. And whatever, it's okay. That's one of the kind of cool and beautiful things about camping is that not everything always goes to plan. You've got to be ready to adapt to that. Uh, go with the flow, roll with the punches. And I think this morning was coming back into fire season and uh, coming back into the, you know, we're going to pre preparing for wet weather again and whatnot. It's um, it's a good a good reminder of um, of what camping really is, and you gotta sometimes you gotta let go of all of that and just just go with the flow, whatever happens. Oh, that was God. just my thought. I thought I'd share that with you. <laughs> Seeing as we're on a wet, cold, miserable gravel chuck and I'm having a blast! <laughs> Hello, I'm the main road which 